Press A to select everything and press X to delete. Now let's press Ctrl X to save this project. We're going to start by creating the base for our glass cup. So I'm going to press Shift A to bring up the Add menu. On the Mesh option, let's add Cylinder. Hit the period key to zoom in. Then let's tap into Edit Mode. Press 3 to go to the first mode. Let's select this top face. Press I to insert a face just here. Let's press E and Z to extrude this in the Z axis. You can turn on Extreme Mode to be able to see what you are doing. Using the Move tool, let's move this down just a little bit. Now, let's scale this just a little bit. Press X to activate the Scale tool and let's move this inside a little bit. Now, I'm going to disable this Extreme Mode right here. Press Ctrl R to add two loop cuts. Scroll your mouse to add two loop cuts to this and then left click to confirm. Now I'm going to press X to activate the S key and let's press Z to scale this in the Z axis. Using the move tool, let's move this up in the Z axis. Holding Alt, I'm going to alt select this inner edge. Press Ctrl B to bevel this inner edge just a little bit. Let's scroll on a mouse to increase the number of the bevel counts. Then let's do the same right here. So let's select this particular one. Let's press Ctrl 7 to go to the bottom view. Let's Alt Select. Press Alt and left click to Alt Select. Then let's press Ctrl B to bevel this. We can reduce the count just a little bit. Press 3 to go to the face mode. Let's select this surface right here and let's press I to insert a face. Let's press I to insert another face. Let's repeat the same process and let's press M to match this at the center. Let's tab out of edit mode. We're going to press Ctrl 2 to add subdivision surface modifier. Let's right click to shade the smooth. Next, we're going to be adding a cube. Press Shift A on the mesh option. Let's select cube. Scale this by 0.2. With the cube selected, let's press Tab to enter Edit Mode. Now I'm going to press Ctrl B to bevel this just slightly. Let's scroll on a mouse to reduce the number of counts. Now let's tab out of Edit Mode. Let's go to our modifier or we can just press Ctrl 2 to add Subdivision Surface Modifier. You can leave the Subdivision Level at 2 or you can increase it to 3. Now let's apply this in object mode. Click on apply to apply this. Next, we're going to add a displace modifier to this. In the modifiers tab, let's go to the deform option and select displace. Next, we're going to reduce the strength just a little bit. We can leave it at 0.2. Then let's click on new. Next, you're going to click on this icon right here. It will take you to the textures properties. Next, we're going to change this image or movie to cloud. Then let's reduce the size. So you can reduce the size to your desired shape, how you want your ice cube to look like. Now I'm going to right click in object mode to shade the smooth. This is not looking bad. So let's move this up just a little bit. Let's move this up. Let's press R to rotate this slightly and let's duplicate this by pressing Shift D to duplicate and let's move this using the Move tool. Let's move this in the Z axis. Now we're going to rotate this a little bit in the X axis. Let's move this out just a little bit. Next, we're going to add a rigid body to this cube. With the cube selected, let's go to our Physics tab. Let's click on Rigid Body and let's leave it on active. Let's do the same for this upper one. Let's click on rigid body and let's leave it on active. Now, we're going to select this cup and we're going to click on rigid body as well to add a rigid body to this. Now, since we don't want this to move, since we want this to remain still, we're going to change the type to passive. Next, we're going to change the shape to mesh because we want the cube to fall and enter inside and not just remain on the surface. Now we're going to play this and see how it looks. 
So I'm going to press this play button to see. If you notice, this is not looking bad at all. This is exactly what we wanted. Next, we're going to be adding a UV sphere for our flute. So let's press Shift A on the mesh option. Let's click UV sphere. Now I'm going to scale this by 0.5. So let's move this up just a little bit and let's shade it smooth. Now, another important thing we're going to do is to duplicate this cup. Since we don't want the fluid to pass through the cup, press Shift D to duplicate and I'm going to name it here as Effector. Then I'm going to scale this out just a little bit. Let's enable this extreme mode to see what we're doing. So let's position this very well. So this is going to serve as our effect. So we're going to disable the render right here. It's not going to show in the render. Always remember to save your work. Press Ctrl X to save your work. Next, we're going to be adding fluid simulation. Let's make this an effect. So with this duplicated cup selected, let's go to the flute section on our physics practice. Let's change the flute type to effector. Now, let's select the inner one. Let's go to the physics practice. Let's enable this flute right here. On the flute type, let's change this to effector as well. Then, we're going to select our cube and we're going to give it an effector as well. Then let's go to our physics practice and let's go to flute to enable it. On the flute type, let's give it effector as well. Same with this one, enable the flute section. Then on the flute type, let's give it an effector as well. Once we have done that, we're going to be adding a domain where this whole simulation is going to take place. I'm going to press shift A to add a cube. Let's press tab to enter edit mode and let's scale this out just a little bit. We can enable extreme mode to see the inside. Then let's scale this out just a little bit and let's move this up. Now I'm going to scale this in the X as X. Then let's tab out of edit mode. We can disable this extreme mode for now. Then let's switch to wireframe mode to see what we're doing. With this cube selected, let's enable this fluid right here then on the fluid type we're going to give it a domain then on the domain type we're going to change gas to liquid then let's increase the resolution division by times two that's 64 of course i always recommend going for a higher resolution divisions for a better result next i'm going to select this our uv sphere on the physics practice, let's enable this fluid section. On the fluid type, we're going to change it to flow. Then on the flow type, we're going to change it to liquid. On the flow behavior, let's change it to inflow. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to the rigid body settings. We're going to disable the dynamics. This controls when the animation starts. So we're going to disable it. And we're going to add in a keyframe right here. We're going to do the same for this one. We're going to disable it and we're going to add a keyframe right here. With our domain selected, I'm going to move to the cache section and I'm going to change the end frame. Then let's change the end frame as well on the cache section. Then let's change this to, let's change this from replay to all. And then we're going to be baking this. Let's click on this big O. So if you notice, this is working pretty well and it's not bad. So next, we're going to go back. We're going to select this effect tool and we're going to hide it for now. With our domain selected, let's go back on the cache session. We're going to free all for now. Then let's set this to replay. Next, we're going to be adding keyframe to where we want this flow to stop. So I'm going to select this fair right here. Then let's go to frame 30 and let's, let's add in a keyframe. Next, let's go to frame 70. Then let's disable this use flow and let's add another keyframe. So this is looking very nice. So I'm going to disable this UV sphere right here. 
so that we'll see what we're doing. Next, we're going to be adding a start keyframe to this ice cube right here. So I'm going to go to, with this cube selected, let's go to frame 100. Let's enable this dynamic right here and let's insert a keyframe. So I'm going to repeat the same process with this one. So I'm going to select the second one and I'm going to enable this dynamic right here and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Next, we're going to select everything and we're going to press Ctrl A to apply all transforms. We're going to select the domain and we're going to share the smooth. We're going to select this ice cube and we're going to reduce this to... Let's bring this down to at least 80. I think this is just too high. Let's leave it at 80. Let's select this one. We can just reduce this to... We can reduce the frame to at least 85 or so. It's okay. Then we're going to select the domain. Let's scroll down on the fractional obstacles. Let's enable it and let's set the distance to zero for better interaction. Now we're going to play this and see our final results. Let's change the end frame to 120. I think 150 is just too much. Let's scroll down on our cache session. Let's change the end frame to 120 as well. Now we're going to play this again. Okay, this is the final result and it's not looking bad. So now we can go ahead to add our materials. Press Z to switch to material view. Let's select our cup and let's go to material tab. Let's give this a glass material. So I'm going to change this pre-spooled BSDF to glass BSDF. So I'm going to reduce the roughness to 0 0.02. So I'm going to name this. Let's name this to glass. Let's select our ice cube and let's give it the same glass material as well. Next, I'm going to select our fluid. I'm going to give it a material as well. So let's go to our material tab. Let's give this a water material. So I'm going to add a principal BSDF. Let's reduce the roughness. Let's increase the transmission to one. Next, we're going to change the IOR to 1.33. That's the best for a water material. So let's do the same for this one. Let's give it a glass material as well. So let's name this in our outliner. Let's name this as glass. Same for this. So let's give our UV sphere a water material as well. Next, we're going to add a backdrop to this. Let's press Shift A on the mesh option. Let's select plane and add to our scene. So I'm going to scale this out just a little bit. Let's tap into edit mode. Let's press 2 to go to edge mode. Let's select this edge and let's press E and Z to extrude this in the Z axis. Let's select this edge right here. Let's press Ctrl B to bevel this. Let's scroll on the mouse as we are beveling this. Next, let's add a camera to our scene. So I'm going to press Shift A to add camera. We're going to be snapping our camera to view. So I'm going to press Ctrl Alt 0 to snap camera to view. So, using the fly mode, so let's position this. Let's go to the world properties and let's add in any HDRI of our choice. So, let's go to world properties. Click on color, this color icon right here. Then let's change this to environment test show. Next, I'll be adding. Let's switch to rendered view. So this is how this is looking in the rendered view. So I'm going to change this from EV to Circus. I'm going to change the device from CPU to GPU. We're going to disable this noise threshold. And let's leave the samples at 512. At 512. Now let's change this water material to a wine color. So let's go to our material tab. So I'll be using a hex code for this so you can copy that. 
so now this is what our scene is looking like so you can go ahead to render this right here you can render this as an image or you can also render it as an animation thanks for watching if you enjoyed this tutorial if it was helpful don't forget to hit the subscribe button